Hey guys, and welcome back to 1000 Lies. Last episode, we had a major bet going on. Let's see what else we can uncover here. After returning from our break and finishing a class I can't even remember, the lesson of we begin preparing... Uh, remember the lesson of we begin preparing for our sled desk race. Ziva, the self-proclaimed Im impartial judge, stand next stands next to me while I tune up my sled desk. I wanted to believe that your sled desks were a little more original than desks being used as sleds. You, uh, seriously, it's a freaking race on top of desks. Will us and you ever grow up, or what? You don't get it, do you? Sled desks represent the inner flame that burns, burns inside of every man, a tool used to awaken our inner beasts. Um, okay. You can't understand it because you lack testosterone. Of course. More like patience. So are you guys going to race in the, in the hallway? It's kind of narrow for that. Besides, do you really think your desks will slide like your desks will slide like sleds? Even if you get rid of the rubber on the leg on the leads legs, I don't think they will. I can't say legs. It's obvious how new you are here. They're, you're just lucky to see a live sled desk race today. I don't know why you haven't done any this year before today. You see, the hallway is positioned at a downward angle, although it can be difficult to notice when we discovered that we realized that there, uh, that here is perfect for racing on top of pretty much anything. We agreed that desks were our best option for racing. That was how sled desk race were born, an important milestone for the future generations. I put tacks over the rubber, uh, on the rubber leg, on the rubber, uh, what? <laughs> I am not being able to speak today, I apologize. I put tacks over the rubber on the legs of my desk so I can slide even, for, uh, even farther down, too. I gently kick one of the desks to show Ziva how far it can go. Thanks to the tack modifications, it slides across the floor and reaches the classroom door effortlessly. The winner is the one whose desk goes the farthest distance in one push. I see. I'm not really convinced, though. The, uh, these races have to end pretty quickly. The desks don't slide for more than 10 seconds. And that's exactly how long a race should take. It isn't like our breaks are that long, either. Then, what's the fun part? You still don't get it? You'll see if you watch. The sled desks can awaken a man's inner strength, which can warp even time and space. Pay attention. Whatever. This game's like on drugs. This game was just someone going through some weird weed trip. Are you ready to lose? Lose? Is that another one of your foreign expressions? I don't know what it means. I fear I'll have to teach you then, Capanero. Desk versus desk in the narrow hallway. There's barely enough space for us to stand around. The most important part of each sled desk race is the beginning. The contestant with the best initial push will probably be the winner. There are also other obstacles in the way, making it pretty difficult to overtake your fellow racer once he has passed you, but you never know in the A race to the death. There are no set rules. Anything goes. The other contestant can try to mess up his opponent at any moment by any means. That's why sled desk races are taken so seriously. You could get pretty hurt, so only the bravest of students can compete. Oz and I are the only ones who participate in these races now that I think about it. I wonder why. As judge, I'll give the starting signal and act as the commentator. Not that I think there's going to be much to say. I mean, are you guys ready to go? Start whatever. The only thing you need to ready are your lips, me and more since I'll take a kiss from you as my prize when I win. I'm going to ignore that. We're starting in three, two, one, go. Ah! Wah! The race begins with a strong first push from both competitors. Their timing was in sync, both of them clearly taking into account how important the beginning of the race is. It's a perfect start. But what's this? Us is in the lead. Uh, how does it feel to be eating my dust back there for once? I'm it. 
Impossible! How can you possibly be faster than me? I'm sure that... You are sure that I wasn't using tax, right? After every race, I'd wonder how CR was so fast. Defeat after defeat, my desk would only stop short while yours seemed so to fly past mine. I studied mechanics and engineering to figure out what could have happened. And then I had no pit money. You're using tax to reduce the friction. With the tack covering each leg, your desk was much faster than mine. When I found out, I decided to uh, against telling you so that next time I'd catch you off guard and I could use it as my advantage. Who's the smart one now? You've done all those races against him without ever knowing that? I noticed as soon as I saw his desk. What do you think I accepted this bet? I'm not the champion because I'm good, it's because he's stupid. Don't spoil my glorious moment. In any case, it still doesn't make sense. We started at the same time with the same push, so how'd Aussie get in the lead? What's going on? With When the distance between the two of us widens, I notice a shimmering trail. Aussie's desk is leaving behind a trail of some sort of liquid. That's... Oil! Aussie's desk legs are covered in oil. That's why his desk is faster. I wasn't satisfied. Satisfied with just being on even ground, I look for more methods to improve my speed. And this is the result I get of my hard work. Maybe. Maybe Austin isn't as dumb as he seems after all. I also drew some flames on the desk to improve its acceleration. In the movies, the flaming cars are always the fastest, so it has to be legit. I take it back. While Austin is distracted, I begin my all-out attack. I toss everything out of my pencil case. Pens, pencils, or scissors, a pencil sharpener, an eraser that looks like a pig, and even some of those fake chocolate coins so ancient that their currency stopped existing more than a century ago. Then fly through they fly through the air towards Oz's un unsuspecting sled desk. If I'm lucky uh, and something hits it, his desk might slide backwards, awarding me victory. But it's not that simple. No way. Partially cloudy with an 82% chance of relative humidity and low pressure font fronts. And an over 60% chance of rain during the day, so I brought an umbrella. Oz used his umbrella to defend the incoming attack. Now Anion has nothing left to throw. Time stands still for me, not because of an incoming premonition of my defeat, or the amazing fact that Oz can memorize daily meteorolo meteorological data so precisely, but for the pain I feel after losing a friend. He who once walked the same path as I is now standing at the crossroads, facing another direction. He's unreachable, and even though I thought he was stupid, he's silently leaving me behind. Probably because he's too good for me. My dearest, Piggy Racer. I watch as it bounces off the umbrella, jumps past the hallway and into the abyss forever lost to me. To tell the truth, I had found it on the floor a couple days ago, and so really I had probably just stolen it from some unlucky fool. Our time together was so short that I didn't even remember what I ha that I had it in my pencil case until now. Still, it was the most powerful and touching relationship I've ever had with an eraser. It's weird. Farewell, my old friend. Vendetta! Endian's gaining ground. How is it possible? He's he's using his opponent's oil trail to his friction and speed up. Between the oil and Austin's umbrella temporarily slowing him down, Endian is about to catch up. He tackles him, he might not so fast. I still have one more trick up my sleeve. Austin took something out of his umbrella. He has he has a ruler. But it's not just any roller, it's a meter stick. Where did he get that from? You know what I'm going to do now, right? Checkmate, compañero. Shit. Oz flung the meter stick into Indian's path. It's like a landmine. It's impossible for you to avoid it, Indian. At this speed, it can only end in catastrophe. Jump, Indian. Save yourself. It isn't worth it. I can't. I can't keep up now. I promised that I'd never forget. I can't let... I can't let my pencil sharpener sacrifice me in vain! No, wait, it was an eraser. Right, an eraser. 
not really sure whether it was an eraser or a sharpener, whatever it was that I cared about, my desk collides with the ruler. The back of the back legs of my desk fly up where it's tipped, uh, flipped by the inertia. An instant later, the front legs follow suit. I'm about to fail. Nevertheless, what the? It's the sound of an angel. Yes, I can hear it. The angels singing, giving me their blessings. A hallucination or maybe a revelation. Anyways, it's here. I can see the heroes of old sled disc races standing next to my eraser, telling me that I shouldn't give up yet. Thanks, everyone. It wasn't necessary. With my newfound divine strength, I managed to flip my desk further to the point that it's now totally upside down. And from here... Go! I hold the desk legs while I stand on the other underside of the table as if it's a skateboard. See, that's what I thought they were going to do initially. <laughs> I grind my way into the banister and manage to overtake Oz. I jump and, with a hard flip, I make the desk return to its original position, allowing me to success successfully continue the race. At last, I'm in the lead. How do you do that? Now Alice's desk is grinding against mine. Two rival desks rub together, creating small sparks of fire and indents in the wood paneling. Uh, the end of the track is coming up, but Alice and I know that there's still something we have to do. You, su you surprised me, Comanero. I won't deny it. But it isn't over yet. We're going to settle this with our bare hands. Uh, fight! A fish fight to the death! Two men in motion on a battlefield. We both stand on our desks, accompanied by the hellish squeal coming from the friction between them. No words are necessary. Dialogue won't accomplish anything. It is now, with our fists, that one of us will fall and the other will grasp victory. Jump, quickly! Goziva's sudden warning makes us come back to reality. We Haven't we been sliding for... Far for too long anyways. I mean, it's true that everything seems to slow down when there's this much tension, but this is too much. Oh. Have it, okay, it's a bit too much. Sorry about the interruption there. When accounting for the oil, it makes sense that we're farther than usual. This isn't good enough, though. This isn't good, though, because at the end of the hallway, there's the stairs! Oh, oh that didn't sound good. They should have blocked that off. Austin and I managed to jump off our desk at the last second, saving ourselves from a nasty fall. The stairs don't go don't go down that far, so the desks uh, still seem to be alright. Everything would be perfectly fine, if not for one tiny detail. At the bottom of the stairs, clearly frightened by her near-death experience, flying, des flying sled desk, we find the new substitute teacher. Wh what do we do now? CR? Congratulations, Oz. You're, you're the sled desk race champion. I'm retiring from all future competitions, so feel free to forget about my past titles and that I never ever can existed in the first place. As a new champion, you need to explain what happened to the administration. The fate of the Global Sled Desk League rests on your shoulders. Farewell. What are you even talking about? CR, Companio! Where are you going? <laughs> wow, that was eventful. Oh my god. I'm at the nurse's office. Rather than leaving the school through the main entrance, I'd prefer going out from here instead. It isn't like there's a real nurse here though, so the attendant is usually the ground is actually the groundskeeper. She handles a lot of different tasks, from paperwork to carrying all the keys. If you persuade her that you're sick enough, you can nap Take a nap here for a while and sneak out after she leaves. Since she handles so many different things, she won't usually notice you're gone by the time she comes back. In any case, she doesn't trust anyone, so the nurse's office always collects more uh, dust more than anything. Then how'd I convince her to let me stay? Easy. I told her the truth. My right leg uh, aches badly. I sit on one of the beds and massage my leg from the knee down, hoping it'll lessen the pain. Afterwards, I take out a small bottle of painkillers and stare at it uh, as it sits in the palm of my hand. I decide against opening it and put it, it uh, put it back in my pocket. I lay on the bed and close my eyes before I start taking deep breaths until I eventually feel myself get lost deep in thought. 
The new substitute must be pissed. She may have, may have not seen us do it, but it's just a matter of time until she figures it out. Nobody got hurt, but even I recognize that we went overboard. If yesterday's prank made her angry, I can't imagine how she took this one. I wonder, will they finally punish me this time? After 15 minutes, I feel better and get up and walk over to the window. The nurse's office is on the first floor, so you can climb down into the back field, making it the perfect place to sneak out from. I haven't made a habit of it, but this will be the first time that I escape out this window when I want to play hooky. Let's see. Although it's a small fall, my leg still hurts. Thankfully, it's tolerable, but that doesn't change how uncomfortable feeling it is. I'll rest more once I am home. Better get going. There's a fence behind the school that separates it from the park. Uh, no one goes back there, and the fence was, has a locked gate that's easy to pick if you're skilled enough. Once you're in the field, the park is only several steps away. I make my way through the park into the pond and begin writing in my notebook. It's not like I have anything better to do, but you'd think by now I would have learned how dangerous it is, it is to walk around with my face stuffed in a book. What was that? Something suddenly hits me in the stomach. Thankfully, it, didn't re it doesn't really hurt. At first, I don't see anything, but when I look down, I find the culprit. That hurts. At my feet, there's a girl with her hands wrapped around her head. At first, I think it's because she ran into me, but then she starts to panic for seemingly another reason. She keeps wanting at the air around her head, and when she realizes that there's nothing there, she goes pale. My hat! She gets visibly nervous, her eyes darting around the area. After a moment, she settles on looking at my shoes, or more precisely, what's behind them, none other than her previously missing hat. I bend over to pick it up, brushing the dirt off as best I can before handing it back to her. This is yours, right? The girl nods in relief as she re reaches out her hands to retrieve her possession. At the last second, I raise my arms and pull uh, the hat out of her reach. She seems familiar somehow. Her name is on the tip of my tongue, but nothing comes to mind. I'm positive I met her before. I bring the hat closer to her, watching as her face lights up with the happiness. I, but I still can't remember who she is. One more time. I move the hat out of her reach and watch her as she automatically grows anxious. I could do this all day. Finally, I relent and return her belonging. I know better than to tease little girls too much. She gets up and inspects her hat, desperately placing it back on to upon the top of her head as if her life depends on it. She looks so happy. Some people are so easily satisfied. But I still haven't figured out how I know her. Maybe taking a closer look will help. She responds doubtfully, staring me down as she slowly takes two steps towards me. Eventually, we're only inches apart from each other. I still can't remember her. It's like I know her, but I can't put a name to a face. Suddenly, she surprises me and breaks the silence with a question. Are you going to keep staring like, th staring like that or kiss me already? I suddenly break the Guinness World Record for backflips, barely managing to stutter anything in response. Kiss you? I wasn't going to. Oh, so it was a staring contest. I won, right? What's my reward? Once she shows me her radiant smile, I remember who she is, that nutcase from yesterday. I think part of me tried to block that event out of my memory, and understandably so. However, I have to admit that I'm pretty curious to know her, what her deal is. Her enc our encounter yesterday was just so random and weird that I can't help but feel curious. There is no reward, it wasn't a contest in the first place, I just couldn't remember your, uh, who you were, a uh, mysterious girl, why? Mysterious girl, why? X is already taken. It's a long story. Look, it doesn't matter. It was just a misunderstanding. Let's start over again from the beginning. Who are you? What's your name? My name is Claire Argyris. I'm 18 years old. My blood type is B. I'm 
four foot nine inches tall. I'm I weigh 97 pounds. My measurements are 25, 20, 27. My favorite color is silver. <gasps> and my favorite periodic table element is tungsten. Oh, good choice. Tungsten is my favorite metal. No, wait a second. Don't mess with me. What kind of introduction is that? You said you're 18 years old? Are we in the same grade? I thought you were a kid. Oh, how would I know? You haven't even introduced yourself yet. What kind of gentleman refuses to introduce himself to a lady before conversing with her? I totally understand that you're nervous after failing to kiss me, but you have to get over it. Believe in yourself. Second time is a charm. I wonder if she's doing that on purpose or if she really is insane. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed that that sled death race. Anyway, I love you guys. Stay kawaii and have fun out there. <laughs>